I met him in 2004 when I was uh, showing my film A Century in Stone about Teesside's history, about the ironstone mining in the Cleveland Hills. Um, and we, I discovered that we had a mutual friend who um, wanted us to hook up. He took me to see Vin, he brought Vin to see my film. I'd always known about Vin because um, I went to the same school as him. I lived in South Bank for the first year of my life and then we moved out to the estates near Eston. Like his family did, it was the trend of the time, you know. And uh, he was the most famous ex-pupil from St Peter's along with Wilf Mannion, who was the Buddha legend. I remember being about 10 or 11 in St Peter's for about the first year, so we were 11, 1978. Um, a schoolmate brought in a copy of Eston California album um, because he was on the front cover. This is David Jefferson, Jaffa, my old schoolmate, and uh, his brother. And I knew most of these lads, they uh, lived in our area, I went to our school. Um, and, uh, and to see this at the time was so unusual because you know you never saw our area um, presented like this. It kind of like made it seem important, you know, this unglamorous place. and. Uh, you know, I'd like to think that it's, it did sow some kind of seed because years later when I started making films um, it was because you know you never saw our area on the TV or in films so that became my thing you know. So there's me watching him in the, in the station pub at Loftus and I'm blown away by the local content, the local issues, the local humour but also the fact that he's got deadly serious songs, deep and meaningful lyrics, very political lyrics. My own um, musical heritage, if you like, was punk, which was all about protest songs and social commentary um, and big global issues. So I was right into what Vin was doing. Um, and, and I really liked the fact that he wasn't parochial, you know, he, uh, he actually got out there and, uh, and went global himself. The cries and the screams and the rape of a nation in trouble. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, this is a, is a major cultural story from Teesside that hasn't been told, just like the one I just made about the, the history of the area, you see. So it was um, pretty obvious that this was going to be my, uh, my next major project. And he gave me a copy of his songbook, which details the, the stories behind some of his more famous songs. And amazingly, there was a personal connection, which I had no idea of before this. Linda's doctor told her things were bright right from the start. A baby due in January to warm her longing heart. But no sooner had she chose the name when she heard that her child couldn't ever be the same. It's a song about a, a woman from Middlesbrough who had a son born with spina bifida and how she had to fight for him to be allowed to live. This was back in the 60s. Um, and he read this in the Evening Gazette when she told the story of her son after he died. You see, he died as a teenager. And I was, um, I got goose pimples all over. I, I was knocked out because um, the woman was called Joan Hall. Um, her maiden name was Hornby. And that's because she was my dad's sister. And that boy was my cousin Raymond, who was um, two years older than me. And so Vin, back in 1980, when she told her story in the local paper, um, wrote this song. He called her Linda in the song. Her name's Joan, my auntie Joan. My cousin Raymond is Kevin in the song. And I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. No, nobody in the family knew about it. And, um, and so I'd, um, I'd, and it was known, this story was known all over the world thanks to Vin. So I phoned up my auntie Joan and I told her the story and um, she was knocked down completely. And um, the plan was to introduce Vin to her and film that as part of the film. But sadly, she died just about six months later. You know, we never ever got to film it. But she knew about it. She found out about it, you know, 20, 25 years or so after he wrote the song, you know, just in the nick of time before she died. Like, This is one of the family albums and um, there's pictures. There's pictures in here of me and Raymond as babies. There you go, that's me on the left. And that's Raymond there, who was about two years older than me. Yeah, and this is a good one. This is, uh, that's Auntie Joan there. There's Raymond. 
there's me, that's my dad, and that's Joan's husband, Uncle Ray, who came to the premiere at Cineworld. They like the person Linda is, the rest of us would be. Still at least, young Kevin's grown to be less handicapped than me.